uh, this meeting about a, a uniform project. So we are the team, a uh, Japanese team of the uniform pro uh, program. And my name is Shinichi Nakasuka. Uh, I am the leader of the UNICEF, University of Space Engineering Consortium community. And I would like to introduce the uh, uh, project leader and project manager of this uniform program. Uh, first, uh, 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 Professor Akiyama from Kaiyama University uh, will be the project leader. Uh, yeah, reader, reader, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, overall, overall project leader of the real home group. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Hirata Akema. Uh, thank you to investing our program. And uh, I'm a, a, project, a full project leader. And uh, uh, Mr. Ishibashi, uh, he's uh, uh, a satellite leader, a first uh, satellite leader. And uh, uh, he's a uh, uh, Dr. Nagaruna, uh, he's the uh, leader of the uh, chief leader of uh, science, science, science Park. So, uh, uh, we, we, uh, our object, uh, our one, uh, most important object is uh, uh, we want to make the new groups uh, to use the uh, satellite and use the space data. So, uh, yeah, we want, uh, I hope uh, this, this discussion is a uh, good start. For our Thank you. Okay, so uh, uh, this morning in this uh, Education Space Education Session, I introduced the overall activity, Japanese uh, nano satellite development activities, very briefly. And after that, I would uh, propose the uh, Uniform Project uh, program uh, to the audience. And so, is there anyone who did not attend the, this morning the space education session? How many? Okay. So, uh, uh, I'd like to briefly uh, review what I pr uh, presented this morning for so using the, this brochure. So, I'm sorry, there is no uh, the overhead project here. So, I, I'd like to use uh, this. Uh, Okay. You have okay. Okay. And the, uh, after that, I'd like to introduce uh, what is the uniform program using the, this one page uh, brochure. Okay. So you, you have these two Okay. So let me introduce uh, this paper. And uh, this paper shows uh, several uh, nanosatellite activities uh, which have been performed uh, used, uh, in the Japanese university community. Okay. So. Uh, the, the left uh, lower part shows the education significance of nanosatellite projects and more. So maybe it goes with the same. Maybe we all of them, uh, we know very well about it. And the uh, first uh, educational program uh, performed in Japan is the uh, CANSAT program, which has been performed since 1999. In this CANSAT program, each university will develop uh, the CANSAT, which is a juice can site satellite. And it's very small. So the, uh, the, the training for the student is to implement all the bus function of the satellite into this uh, cancer. And in addition to that, each university should implement the mission function. Mission means some experiment. And so this gives the student a very good training, first day training to develop a very small satellite. And many universities in Japan uh, have the training uh, program uh, using the cancer every year. And then please uh, go to the second page. And ARIS, a rocket launch for international student satellite, it, which is an annual suborbital launch experiment performed between the United States and Japan. And every year, the many Japanese students uh, go to the United States to test their cancer using the suborbital rocket launch. And this rocket can lift the cancer up to the altitude of 4 kilometers. And during the descent with the parachute, it's taking about uh, maybe 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, many uh, types of the uh, experiment have been performed. So, uh, this is the history of this Iris experiment. And the upper right side shows the some uh, pictures taken uh, during the uh, final integration of the cancer into the rocket. And the lower uh, right uh, left shows the CubeSat. So, uh, in Japan, the CubeSat emerged in 90, uh, uh, sorry, 2003. Uh, which uh, the University of Tokyo and the uh, Tokyo Institute of Technology uh, developed their first CubeSat and to be launched into the orbit in 2003. And since then, many universities have been performing uh, the CubeSat activities. 
And the, after the gifts of development, many universities go into more practical satellite, such kind of the space uh, science or remote sensing and so on. So this is the current situation of Japanese, a uh, Japanese university. And the lower right show, I'm sorry, this is the um, white and black picture, but if it is in blue, it, it is very uh, beautiful. But it, uh, this is the uh, photo, the example of the photo taken by the troops at Side 4, which was built by our university, University of Tokyo. Uh, and the, uh, this uh, cube set was launched in 2003, and it survived in space for more than seven years. Mm -hmm. So if we make a satellite, uh, seven years. And the, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the critical uh, the page. And this page shows the uh, several uh, nanosatellite and picosatellite. Nanosatellite means less than 10 kilogram satellite. And picosatellite means less than 1 kilogram satellite. And these are the several examples of the Japanese nano and picosatellite launched up till now. And from 2003 and 2008, until 2008, we launched uh, seven uh, nanosatellite and tube staff. And the, uh, last year, at uh, the first time, uh, the JAXA uh, provided us with a very good piggyback opportunity on the H2A. And on this occasion, four uh, university satellites were launched all together, including uh, University of Tokyo's PRISM. And the lower right, let's show the uh, another additional four university satellite was launched in this year, and which is uh, the piggyback launch to the, uh, with the uh, H2A rocket, which is going to toward the Venus. Okay. So one of these satellites is going uh, toward Venus. So this uh, UNITEC one uh, was the first university satellite which goes beyond the uh, gravitational field of the Earth. And in order to support these kind of, in order to support these kind of the university uh, activities, student activity, UNICEF, University Space Engineering Consortium, was founded in 2002 and became NPO in 2003. And so this UNICEF supports uh, education and human resource training for space developing, uh, uh, development and utilization and innovative space technology sees development. And currently we have 47 laboratories from 38 universities. It is now a very big organization and including more than 500 students. And many types of the activities are supported in this UNICEF. And I am uh, currently the chairman of the UNICEF. Let's go to the next one. And the notion of space again is one activity of the UNICEF community. Every year in uh, August, that many university students uh, get together at the Noshiro, which is the northern part of Japan, uh, to do this kind of the hybrid rocket experiment or a CANSAT experiment. And CANSAT competition uh, is also performed in this Noshiro event. And the uh, right figure shows the uh, University of Tokyo's activities. So we're going to skip uh, this one, uh, and the, okay, so please go to the last page. And so University of Tokyo developed the several satellite, and now we are developing the Nano Jasmine, which is an astrometry satellite, uh, aiming for uh, obtaining the very precise star, 3D map. And the, uh, this satellite is now at the uh, stage of the top science uh, of the space science. And so, uh, from the educational objective, now the uh, university level, uh, say, uh, engineering level, reaches this level in, in Japan. So, uh, and the, the lower, uh, sorry, uh, the light figure, upper light figure shows that a venture business uh, emerged from this kind of university activity. So, uh, the students graduating from my laboratory uh, established a uh, uh, venture business named Axel Space, and they are now developing the uh, this kind of the remote sensing satellite, and which is ordered from a uh, weather news company, which is a weather forecasting company. So this kind of the venture business activity also emerged in the Japanese uh, now satellite development. And the, uh, the lower, uh, lower right uh, shows the uh, cooperation with the STAR program. You know that there is a, a very good JAXA STAR program is now going on in the Asian region. And the, uh, we would like to combine the uni uniform and the STAR program in this way. So I'd like to discuss it later. So this is what uh, the Japanese universities uh, did up to now. And based on the experience and the know-how and the uh, technology developed in these uh, histories, we would like to propose the uniform project. Okay? 
So now, let's move on to the one page uh, brochure. And you, can, and you can this brochure, we'd like to, uh, to explain what it in means. So, okay. Mm. So, I'd like to switch. Uh, this explanation to uh, Mr. Uh, Ishimashi. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kanano Ishimashi, just call me Kane. I am with the University of Tokyo, and I will be leading this uh, satellite development in this uniform project. So if you come to Japan and to, uh, to the uniform project, you will see me first, probably. So I'll be the point of contact. So if you have any questions afterwards, or if you, your people being back, your, back into your country have questions, Please contact us or me. Me or Professor Akiyama will be receiving the email. Um, you have the email at the very bottom. So I would like to make sure you all got the email addresses uh, to begin with. So, okay, I will talk a little bit about the Uniform Project. Um, you have, uh, so Uniform Project, this is funded from MEC, uh, which is the Ministry of Education and Science and Technology. And we got this fund just last month. And we will be starting, we are started, and we are starting the development of the, uh, the base design of the um, satellite, and we are started to talk to, talk to different people to um, gather the community. And so I would like to talk about the mission, and then the satellite development, and then the ground operation, and then the schedule. So first of all, um, to begin with, it, the uniform is uh, trying to create a uh, micro satellite, which is less than 50 kilograms, and the size is 50 centimeter by 50 centimeter by 50 centimeter. So this is little bigger than the CubeSat that you might all be more familiar with. CubeSat, which is 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter. So it's a little bigger and a little heavier, which means it has more capability. It, 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 which can carry more um, more uh, sophisticated science payload or, or more practical payload. So that's the difference between CubeSat and this microsat. So the mission is, I'll read the, the sentence first. All the participating, participating countries will participate in a mission working group to cooperatively uh, uh, formulate a certain mission for a whole constellation. So one idea is that all of the satellites will do the same thing, say talking, taking pictures or measuring CO2 level in the atmosphere and so on and so forth. Ah, okay. Yeah. So in this case, so constellation will make the revisit so that if you have a more satellite, you will the satellite will visit above above a certain surface more. I mean, the more frequently than to have just one satellite uh, going around the Earth. That, that means the constellation. Constellation is to have several satellites um, orbiting around the Earth. So the, the revisit interval is very small. And another idea is, is that in addition to that common mission, the, each country or each um, participating um, community can have their own um, additional mission of their own interest. For example, you have a main mission, and as a sub-mission, you can take a certain picture of your, of your interest, of, of your community interest. So that's the another um, mission that we can carry. Yeah. Are you suggesting there's two different sensors on board, or you have one sensor, one optic, and it just you get to use it for some period and the rest? Thanks for asking. Um, that's a really good question. It, it really depends. Because if one payload can do two jobs, for example, if you have a five meter um, ground resolution camera and can do the both common mission and then the individual mission, then there's, there will be only one payload. But if you want some very different um, mission data for yourself or your community, then you have to carry another mission data. So it really depends. So those are the things that we can start talking about from today or now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the goal of this uh, mission part is to have each community or each country or each university to build its own satellite at the end. So it, this whole project is, is thought in five year span or a four, four, year, five, four year span. 
And we are trying to continue on, of course, as, as long as we can get the funding and as long as we can gather more people. So this is the basic plan, and that's the basic goal that you want to uh, keep in keep your mind. Okay? Not for you, not for you. It's hard. Yeah, it really depends on how much we can. Yeah. So, and yeah, moving on to number two, satellite development. So satellite development will be performed in principle by each country, one or more universities. Uh, but we, as a Japanese group, will be ready to provide required technologies for standard satellite equipment, and etc. So, which means we will be supporting to de develop and do some training and do some tutorials and things like that. So, and we are also part, uh, preparing an educational service to help uh, countries develop their satellites. And we are now applying, applying for a fund to the government as, as, to, this, uh, as to this service. So we, we are uh, pushing ourselves towards the, the, the funding to support the, all the participating countries, their activities, their visits, and things like that. So the cost for satellite development will be on each country, but some equipment may be de uh, delivered freely in, to, to those participating communities or countries from Japan. As I said, you know, as, as, as far as we can get the budget, as, as far as we can get the funding, for that, and we are trying to do so, so that um, as, uh, you know, uh, many people can join us without worrying about the big, big funding to, that they need to apply for. We are trying to um, bring as many as people as, as possible to the process. In order to achieve the result, we are now uh, developing the standard satellite bus concept and the, uh, some satellite equipment which is very cheap and the, uh, very affordable and very easy to uh, say, uh, integrate it into just a standard bus concept. And so that kind of equipment may be uh, delivered freely uh, to the uh, participating countries. So this is our current concept. Right. But of course it depends on some budget in the future budget, but we are trying to get uh, the development such kind of equipment uh, from the government. Okay. So Oh, just stop me yeah, if you have any questions. Uh, I've wondered what the, um, from the additional member countries that may get involved, what kind of minimum levels of experience or expertise you were anticipating um, may be required? Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's something maybe we can probably discuss. We're probably open to almost anybody. Yeah. Almost anybody. <laughs> but we can't just have you know, a bunch of elementary kids who do it. So, for example, uh, if it's a country who, which has not any experience, uh, this kind of experience, maybe the cancer training course would be the first to pass it. And then after that, we go into this training course. So, we have to do this kind of stepwise program. So, the expectation is they've at least done some kind of suborbital type exercise. Yes, uh, the suborbital uh, experiment using the cancer first, and then go into the real space. This is what in Japan many universities uh, experience. So we'd like to have this kind of the stepwise uh, training uh, to the many universities. Mm -hmm. So this is our kind of one. So yeah, step by step is preferable, but just negotiable. So we can still pass. Oh, I was just trying to clarify whether, yeah, you had to have flown a, a CubeSat, for example, in order to be involved in the more microsat size. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Just stop me if you have any questions. And uh, number three, uh, ground operations. So we're now uh, developing a low-cost ground station for S and X band to be used for uh, downlink of image data or whatever the mission data. Uh, these ground stations will be installed in the participating countries or communities so that we can establish an international ground station network to obtain more chances to operate the constellation of satellites. So this <coughs> part is very important because nanosatellite does not fly in very high power orbit. So we need to have more um, ground stations to gather <coughs> more data from the nanosatellites. Okay, uh, number four, the last few schedule. Uh, we will announce the call for participation, participation and start a discussion on mission as well as development of uh, required satellite equipment within uh, 2010, which is today. 
Uh, engineering model of a model satellite will be developed in the year 2011. An actual satellite, uh, FM means uh, flight model, will be developed by each country sometime in collaboration, uh, sometime in collaboration with uh, Japan, which means us, in 2012. The first group of satellites maybe two or three or ho hopefully, and more is better because, because of the, uh, we're trying to do this in a, a conservation manner, mm -hmm. will be launched hopefully, we don't know yet, in 2013 using Japanese a QA rocket or foreign rocket. So that's our uh, very uh, broad schedule, but that's what we're thinking. So, yes? Yeah. Is your objective regional partners? Like, are you talking to NASA about this, or are you just looking for regional partners? I guess that it leads to the next question, which is, uh, is the orbit going to be uh, sort of um, more regional orbits, or is it like a further one, or at a latitude on our hemisphere, sorry, our western hemisphere, rather than uh, a polar orbit or something, or a, sorry, an equatorial orbit or something? Yeah, actually, we are not um, limited to the, uh, the ge geographical uh, nearness or orbit okay. or anything like that. And we are trying to reach out as far as possible so that, you know, um, we, we can ga gather people who's just interested in So we're not limited to the ge uh, geographical um, I, I think, as I mentioned, then, we have fairly close ties with Stuttgart Uni and sure. Toronto, yeah. and they're basically doing the same as we are. You guys are just doing it on a much bigger scale, so, you know, they might be interested in coming in. If you want their contact, you know, be happy to. Right. You, you, you taught me about the Toronto University in the system. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yes. Can I ask, since you're funding um, mm -hmm. the launch, or is that um, mm -hmm. covered by the two-state mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. if, 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 if it's delivered by A to A, then that's covered. But if it's not, then it really depends on who we're talking to, which uh, vehicle that we're using. And we should search for the application of Yeah, probably. But do we have targeting for the H3 or the first Is that, and you've got the, the launch tools, so you've got the agreement for that launch. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be uh, better for the best choice, probably. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in terms of fun. Yeah. Any other questions? <coughs> are you going after a piggyback launch, or are we going to try and launch a whole lot of them at once? Ah, uh, piggyback. Piggyback launch. Yeah, piggyback. As, as, as far as we don't, you know, as far as we don't yeah. find like hundred dollar rockets, yeah, <laughs> long yeah. So as, as as we can increase the chances, uh, as we can increase the number of you know, micro or nano satellites who want to go up in space, then we can create more opportunities for rockets. That will probably, we think, we believe that will uh, bring the uh, prices down in the, in the near future. Because it's not, like you said, like you mentioned, it's not only us that's trying to um, um, put the nano or micro satellites in the orbit, it's the um, Europeans, it's the Americans that are trying to do this. So, And so the, the concept is to create a community who has a request for rocket people that we need to go up in space. And we can make a new world. Yes. <laughs> so as a community, we have to have a bigger voice so that they can consider us as a customer for them. And so that in, in, in the competition, the practice will get pulled. And that's the, the vision for the, the rocket energy uh, opportunity. Uh, in the Sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. The, the ground station that you're developing, what sort of footprints has it got? What, what does it look like? Where do, you, where do you propose to put it? Like on top of a building or in a paddock somewhere? So, so at this point, at this point we're thinking of an antenna, the diameter is about three meters, okay. and a removable, I mean the mo mobile, that's what we're thinking. But of course you can of course make it stationary. Yep. That's possible. Yep. And the price will be a lot cheaper than the commercial ones. But that's the, the hardest thing we can say right now. Because we're on new development, we're trying to 
do this in Buckeye Island University. But do we, uh, we yeah, yeah, this Katie Kilburn. 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 So yeah, we're in some of development and we'll see how it comes in. Well, I mean, just, 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 we, we've also had some, of the, some experience with our tracking systems for our sounding rocket launches, so, you know, uh-huh. there's something we could do to work together to minimize the cost, we would be happy with that as well, so. Yeah. We'll about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Our antennas are much smaller than yours, though. So. Yeah, how big they work? Oh, we just had a Yagi. Okay, Yagi. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, the tracking system is the only thing we would have uh, any use, you know, in any ability to help you with the actual dishes and that we haven't had any big dishes. Okay. Yeah, we uh, we wanted to use the his bamboo expand, so yeah. We, yeah, we yeah, it will probably be a big dish. Yeah. Okay. So, so are you looking for existing sort of infrastructure or are you looking to establish the grant Because some universities do have yeah. If, if they do have the, uh, um, the infrastructure and it's compatible with what they want, or maybe we can make it you know, yes. compatible. Do you, do you have specifications for what you're looking for? Uh, not quite yet. Not quite yet. Can you write an expanded 30 standards? Yeah. Like the set for it is 30 standards. Right. Because I agreed to support the INSO project. Mm-hmm. I agreed to support INSO and then I also support. If they were partners, I'm sure they would. They've indicated that before on ASLP bids that we've put in, but you know, I don't want to talk for them, they're not our institution, but there certainly is a possibility that uh, in, in UniSA we could use that ground station. So, so yeah. so they already go into the SM or XM? We're going to be going to support the Indo, and that has the ability to support that. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically, the feedback was along with the community here with their commercial activities, mm-hmm. but they were very happy to support any university in consolation. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, I think it's patient. Yeah, I can't think of them, but in saying that if these systems are not that expensive, then it might be better to have a dedicated system because yeah. once commercial um, restrictions come into it, then commercial right. restrictions only grow with time. And if you're looking for time to grow your satellite constellation, mm-hmm. then ultimately they diverge from each other. Right. So the, the, the approximated cost at this point of the antenna, and then only antenna, uh, antenna, and then the control system. Is about um, three hundred or what is it? So it's going to be thirty thousand yeah. dot US dollar per approximately. So this is a lot, a lot cheaper mm-hmm. than what you get from the from the commercial people. So those are we're aiming at it. <coughs> we never know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. And how many ground stations do you feel is required? So at this point. Mm-hmm. We don't know. <laughs> 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 well, more than area, though. Yeah, well, the thing is, one ground station in Japan still works. Mm. As far as the community is concerned. If we have two, we yeah. have more opportunities. Mm. Yeah. Yes, to the S-man, we have also already several on there. Yeah. We need a yeah. 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 the, But do we have only one S-man? Yeah. 2.4 meters. And, but in maybe, maybe three or four months, we will have another one, which has maybe three meters or 3.8 meters for S-man. And using that uh, antenna, we are thinking that, that our, our transmitter can transmit uh, about uh, maybe 20 megabps speed. It's very fast. Mm-hmm. So that, that should be very That's enough. The, the expand one? Yeah. Expand, expand, expand. 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 Down. Down. Okay. Yes. So, and uh, I'd like to uh, ask uh, one more thing about schedule. And in 2011 fiscal year, that means uh, starting from uh, next April, uh, in Japan uh, we will develop one satellite uh, by the Japanese team. And also we would like to include the several uh, foreign students, foreign people in that group uh, to develop the first satellite. So this is uh, kind of the model for the future satellite, or kind of the standard for the future satellite. And maybe in 2000, from 2012 we would like to select one uh, foreign country uh, to develop the first uh, F5 model. So this is the current schedule. So, so maybe in 2013 or 14, we'd like to have two satellite launch. One is developed by the, maybe from by Japanese team, and one 
developed by the foreign country. So the, these two will be uh, launched into the starting of the This is the first round launch. Yes, so I think we covered all the one through four items. Um, and I think questions are if you have any more questions, yes, sir. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm, my name is Tata. I'm from Indonesia. So uh, I'm uh, with National Institute of Aeronautics and Space. So we are also developing uh, satellites, currently micro satellites. Micro yes, and we are also uh, participating in the STAR program okay. of APRSAM. Mm -hmm. But uh, with regard to your uh, activities here, uh, I'm pleased to inform you that uh, in Indonesia there are also uh, a number of universities that are just starting to, they want to develop a satellite. Okay. Um, probably nano satellites. Yeah, okay. So, um, a huge star, do you think? Yes, something okay. like that. Um, there are four universities at the moment, which is the uh, Bandung Institute of Technology, Surabaya Institute of Technology, Kajah Mata Uni University and the University of Indonesia. Mm -hmm. um, I think they are currently um, in, in the um, planning phase okay. of, of the satellite. So mm -hmm. uh, I will uh, inform your activities to them. Yes, please. And I think uh, they would be very interested to, to join you. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And if, there, if, if it's needed, we can do the... Uh, uh, probably a teleconference, yes. okay. or if, if, if it's more needed, we can probably visit and give a okay. little talk. Okay, that would be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, okay. so I will, so. Yes, I will inform this to them. Yes. And I think they would be very much interested to send some of their people <coughs> uh, to have training uh, here uh, in, in, in Japan mm -hmm. to, to start developing the satellites also to participate in that. Right. It will be an on-the-job training, yes. so yes. The, the people joining us will be a member of the, yes. of the, de okay. the actual development, yes. and that through that process, okay. you will learn okay. and um, okay. gain and um, knowledge of okay. satellite development. Okay, and I have a question mm -hmm. uh, with regard to the uh, X and X band frequency yes. you are using. Mm -hmm. I, I believe we have already coordinated with IPU or um, International Telecommunication Union for use of this frequency satellite. Not, not yet. Okay. Yeah, we are, we are okay. For the X band, we already have one experience with frequency band. Okay. And for the X band, we are now applying uh, for the uh, Japanese uh, ministry. Okay. And the, maybe in the next year, we will like to have the IP application. Okay. So I think if we want to have a constellation of satellites, we yes. need uh, the coordination with IPU. Exactly. Yeah. It is coordination with IPU and then coordination with yes, each country, country, yes, country. Yes. is necessary. Yes. And, and as you know, it's the process takes a long yes. time. Yes. So That's right. we need That's to right. start this yes. as, as fast as possible. It sometimes yes. can take four to seven years. <laughs> <laughs> um, exactly. <laughs> Which will be... So, uh, we try to reduce that time by okay. using the community okay. power. Okay. Okay. So this is very important. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And maybe we don't need uh, many type of expand that expand frequency. Only okay. one should be enough okay. for so this. So we can system. use uh, one frequency yes. for the many yes. satellites. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. That's it. So I just wanted to add another thing to the. So the, the probably the last page of your handout of the the one with the situation is the top Yes, I wanted to add some few more comments on this. So as as, as the gentleman mentioned, the last the very last page. Oh, that's the that's the page. Yeah, very last page. Good. And then the the right bottom corner. Yeah. So cooperation with the STAR program, as the gentleman um, <coughs> pointed out, there is a STAR program uh, uh, coordinated by JAXA, and so so this uniform project and the STAR project is margin in 2011, and the the and more specifically, um, 
micro uh, star micro star project is will be joining the uniform project. So what we share is that um, uh, the second dot of the strategy of cooperation says our uniform will design a less than 50 kilogram class satellite on its own concept, but will refer to the result of conceptual design of the micro uh, star if appropriate. So this is our uh, basic stance of the cooperation and the we will um, welcome the uh, uh, micro star uh, participants and the uh, cooperating um, uh, organizations to the uniform. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, we uh, start program of prepared a uh, 200 page uh, document about the uh, constitutive study of the micro star. Mm -hmm. so that means mm -hmm. I show you or the we will show, uh, show, um, we will show them the, uh, the result of the, uh, our study. So, yeah. That's the status of the star and then the uniform. Mm -hmm. So it is some uh some time uh I have a question. So yes. it is some uh how is efficient study with results in microstar. So that should be very good uh, for us to refer. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, I have the material of the uh result of the um, uh, my first uh, constitutional study, but uh, mm, I don't have the hard copy now. Mm -hmm. It is okay, but the yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, the I Thank you. So, yes, that's the how we uh, march with the start process. And I want, I'm sorry, I'm just scattering around, but I wanted to add a little bit more about the uh, mission part. So, our mission is aiming to be practical or useful or the, the use so that the satellite data can be utilized as a test. And the, in the future goal that we want this micro satellite to help people or to support the satellite or to support the, the activities on the, the humans and on Earth. So we are trying to make this project as practical as possible so that this is not going to be an engineering um, Geeks project, so to say. So this won't be just a development-only process. We want this satellite to be very useful for some specific purpose. It, it, okay. Of course, it has a limited capability because it's not a 4,000 kilogram satellite, or this is not a 5,000 kilogram satellite. So it, it, it has a uh, limited ca capability but we want to make uh, this small capability to be at its maximum so it can be useful for a specific mission or a purpose. So that's the very um, huge background idea of this uniform project. This is not just an engineering um, project. This is, so to speak, a science uh, involved, of course, and if, if you want to make the data useful in the community or the society, it might include this um, science, um, social study aspect in the process. So when we think about the mission, or the common mission, or the uh, uh, the individual mission. So please take this as a you know, broader view mission, or a broader view project, and please bring it back to your country or your community and spread this around to the people around you. And please, um, let us know if there's anybody who's interested in, in any aspect of this project. Maybe there might be someone who's interested in the overall view of the project. There might be someone who's more interested in the uh, grad network. That's okay. That's okay. We can talk and we can think the better way to do this. But as we uh, mentioned you know, several times so far, we need a community. To have a to have to, to have a stronger voices or a bigger voices, so that's the overall topic. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Ah, so yeah, uh, Mr. Nadoka Nakamura is a uh, leader of the mission uh, study team. So. On uh, the meters to say it's very important to have a common goal 
and uh, and he told you uh, the, we can, one, one common mission for, for every satellite actually, and uh, but it should be boys not only to the developers, I mean uh, the engineers, but also for the usually usually the ordinary people and possibly to the, the young ages, students and children, I think. And uh, uh, of course maybe uh, before the uh, after web ages, for example, we have for example web channels. Uh, accessible to the internet, and maybe uh, if, if you are on the, on the w one small room, there are many web channels which can be controlled by the uh, on your laptop. So, <coughs> uh, and uh, the satellite uh, channel can be sometimes the one web channel. So usually, uh, there's a very high barrier to, to access the data and to control the, to control the channel. Then uh, uh, if we have we provide one uh, web channel. On, on the orbit, so it will be very, very attractive for the ordinary people. Now, of course, uh, we have, for example, the, now the we Google Earth, so it, uh, it was very powerful to, for ordinary people to access the whole globe. But um, uh, it is uh, basically it's owned by one company in the U.S. And of course, uh, they are very generous; they are providing some very good data. But uh, if we can have one community, and if we have uh, several satellites accessible from the ordinary user. Maybe uh, we can control actually one camera on, on, on the orbit, and we can feel the space is most far. It, it, it's actually our uh, accessible space. So uh, I think that, that it's very, very, very uh, important to have one, one, one common goal. And, uh, and, and, and for, for that goal, so maybe the, many uh, international engineers can work together. So, uh, of course, we have very limited time uh, to find uh, the mission. So uh, I want to uh, ask the broader voice, maybe from, from your own country. So uh, please, uh, when, when you go back to your, your country, <coughs> your institute, so please ask them, not only engineers, <coughs> but also people. So what, what do you want if you can access to the, uh, the camera and the orbit? And where do you want to see? And what do you want to see? And what, what do you want to do with that, 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 that kind of problem? By using the data? So uh, the gravitation has not been studied in uh, to the full uh, text yet, but maybe we can guess that uh, about a 10 meter gravitation would be possible within the 50 kilometers. We already have the 5 meter uh, GSD uh, optical system, but uh, maybe for this project we'd like to uh, have a more relaxed uh, requirement. So we, maybe we'd like to have the 10 meter ground resolution. So please think about what kind of mission can be possible using the 10 meter ground resolution satellite. And the uh, special feature is that it, uh, many satellites have the same uh, capability, and so you can get an image uh, more frequently. So what kind of mission would be possible using that kind of uh, system? So this is one example, of course one example. So remote sensing is not fixed yet. Remote sensing is one example. So please think about it in this way. Okay. Is, is there any um, uh, possibility, I don't know much about uh, um, uh, synthetic capture radar, but if you have a constellation of satellites and if they're all launched, if, you, if we're piggybacking and you launch three satellites on one um, launch vehicle, presumably they'll be fairly close proximity. Um, and if they were to spread out <coughs> and then have a synthetic aperture or something like that, that may have you know low cost satellites with the ability to have very high resolution type image. Uh, so I don't know, formation flying. Always flying for the synthetic aperture right now? Very challenging. Yeah, okay, that's true. The University of um, Sydney do, is it Sydney? Or yeah. UNSW, or, or Sydney, I can't remember, do um, uh, sort of formation flying investigations. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know anything about it. I just thought I'd raise it. But if it's out of the question, that's fine. I do, yeah. uh, okay. Uh, no, but if that's too complicated, that's fine, yeah. that's a thought. So we, we, we don't want to exclude any kind of idea, so let us discuss. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, it might not be able to do that in like one year or two years, but as, as you said, we, need, we want to continue this on. Mm -hmm. So as a for, you know, future um, mission or future target, mm -hmm. we can of course discuss that. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, excuse me, I have this one. Uh, regarding to the uh, cost uh, issues, mm -hmm. What would be necessary uh, to prepare on the participant side? Uh, 
that the the uh, participants uh, need to uh, pay uh, something. At this point, we do not have an exact answer for that because we, we are still trying to get the funding, and we do have some basic funding to start the project, but we need to um, discuss further mm -hmm. about that. But to to do do to um, proceed with discussions, we need what you think, right? So we can just, we need what you think or what your people think so that we can re reflect that into our um, schedule or our um, proposal uh, towards the Japanese government. So to, to answer uh, Mr. Tsuji's um, question, we do not sure, we are not sure how much the participants need to pay or what portion they need to pay. but. Please um, talk to us, and uh, if you are, if you or your, anybody you know have the intention to join the project or to partially join the project, so that we can reflect that into our proposal for the funding, for the future funding. And so, uh, as a first step, uh, is it possible to uh, just join or just uh, participate uh, for the um, uh, for the development? Or the, yeah, is it okay for you? Yes, it's, 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 it's very possible. It's very possible. And so, yes, we're not, we're, we, we're not, um, we don't have a very strict selection, or we do not have a uh, scary committee to uh, <laughs> yeah. discuss. I, 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 uh, uh, yeah. I think the course issue is that, uh, I didn't mean to but we are, uh, uh, yeah, the participate, right, uh, to the participant side. Mm -hmm. I think that I think uh, mm, it's necessary to, uh, to be good here as a uh, cost issue measure. Uh, yeah. right. so, uh -huh. yeah, so, we, yes, we really appreciate your uh, suggestion. So please let us know your uh, situation and so that we can take some of that into account. And we will try to do our best to support the uh, participants because as, as we said, this is to build the community. <laughs> If you build a community, you need to support each other. So please talk to us if you have any <coughs> concerns or issues. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. If we're going to go, but we're going to go back to um, the different partners mm -hmm. and um, the forwards of this proposal. Do you have some, apart from this statement here, mm -hmm. do you either have a website or something electronically that lays out your current mm -hmm. version of the commitment or uh, what was required from the participant so that we can send that information out? Because to be able to communicate that, right. we have to have something right. that says what we're looking for. So we have, at, at this point right now, we have this um, slide and uh, the panda. We can distribute it electronically mm -hmm. and soon after I get the information. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, we will bring, uh, we will uh, start up the uh, website, which is not ready yet. After we got the funding, like two days ago. We will, we will get the. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> we will get the website ready so that you you can uh, you, you see a point of contact, you see a uh, content, and you see a uh, yeah, tentative schedules and things like that. Yeah. But uh, if you can give me your contact information, uh, if you can give me contact information, I can send you the material electronically so that you can start talking to people. If that will help. I also wondered um, whether there may be a way to allow participation but not in the form of kind of contributing a satellite. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe there's some outreach activities, um, you know, sort of on paper capacity building rather than sort of physical satellite contribution mm -hmm. that could be done for you know, smaller countries or you know, like New Zealand ourselves has fairly low capability at present. Mm -hmm. um, but that may mean you, by following this project we can assist in uh, developing that. So yes, um, that, that's very possible because it, it, the the country, I mean the participation style or type can be uh, uh, varied because of the uh, tech, uh, technical experience, experience and things like that, or budget or things like that. So it's it, 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 the part, partial participation or you know different types of participation. Like part, participation is is very welcome and. It's, it's okay to bring the, the materials or the... We will try to, probably try to uh, create uh, 
sort of a textbook or maybe a tutorial um, something, probably a document, or maybe a maybe a series of videos or pictures or things like that. We were trying to compile that at the end of the first round of the development. So you might want to, you know, you want maybe you might want to access to that so that you can maybe, you know, think about trying on the second round or things like that. So did did I answer your question? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Do you have um, any uh, restrictions on what you're allowed to do with the data? So supposing the common mission was a certain camera and we you know, built a satellite, put the camera on it and we had another instrument which was, I don't know, a sensor of something else mm -hmm. and we could sell that information commercially. What's the, what are the limitations or how do you want, how much um, commercial involvement are you allowed to have mm -hmm. if it's pure research mm -hmm. or what have you thought about that? Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you can get back to me, it's fine. Sure, so, yeah, we're still in the process. But, but what, we're hoping, what we're hoping is to probably test some of the data so that it's actually supported in the commercial, in the market. We want that in the, in the near future as fast as possible. So, because so, uh, I tell you, like, from Australia's structure of their, um, their funding uh, bodies, uh, the space of the Australian this, this, uh, desert in particular, they want, always want to see some commercial outcome. So if you just if it's just purely an academic mm. um, exercise, then they say we'll go to the, the Australian Research Council and get funding for it, mm. which is you know then just like when you're competing with people who are growing flowers or something like mm. that. You know th then if there's specific money for space research, but for some reason, well, desert or not, uh, the Research Council they want some sort of commercial outcome. So if we could say well. Not necessarily for us to make money, but if the whole group right. was to be able to sell the information, then that also has a commercial outcome. Then it would make a stronger case for us to bid for money anyway. Right. Right. Yeah, so in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the topic, we are thinking of commercializing the, the data for the, the product, for the second product. Yeah. So, but we still need to talk to the people yeah, no, sure. who's funding. Yeah. As a but but we, we kind of think that part is a big, big drive for this micro or miniature live satellite, even in a very you know, distant future, because currently the big satellite players are dominant and they're not allowing anybody to come into, you know, Rocky Martin uh, they are not allowing anybody to come into their field. And the the, the whole idea is to, you know, a little bit change the game. The, the player will be changed so that things will change mm -hmm. as the laptops, as the cell phones, could. they're built. That's the bigger picture in maybe 30 or 40 years. So that's the whole big concept. So to answer your question, yes, we are considering it, but we're still um, talking to the people, um, trying to see what's the best way to do so. Yeah. Yeah. And if that's the case, I mean, I suppose that also then gives a good argument for going for formation flying top because you know, if you, if you want, ultimately the reason you can't take a very good photograph with a small camera is because optics are still governed by physics. You want a, you want a good picture, you need a big lens. There's nothing you can do about that. Right. Whereas if you've got something electronic like SAR or, or, or even LiDAR or something like that, then I think you have, that, that's so much more technology driven rather than physical science driven. Mm -hmm. And that, that then puts you in the same boat as a mobile phone where you can miniaturize things. So I guess you know it might be an idea to think about that in our mission design. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, concerns? Yeah, I think we just uh, we have the room reserved until 6 p.m. So it's about time to finish it up. So thank you very much for um, coming to the um, session. <laughs> And we are very pleased that we saw this many people here. And please talk to us. And if you need, um, uh, I think I got most of the uh, the, the, the card. So if you need more information or if you want to ask um, a few more questions, we'll be around tomorrow and um, day after tomorrow. So let's talk to us. And thank you very much for coming. I'll probably see you soon. <laughs>